Alright, I'm making this video to give you my thoughts and impressions of episode 1 from the second season of The Witcher Show on Netflix. Since this is the first video in the review series, I suppose I should start with a few words about the season in general. So here's my brief overview. It's all wrong! Season 2 looks better, pretty much in every single aspect. They clearly had a higher budget, and it shows. Not only is the CGI better, you know, the spells and monsters and other effects, but there are also improvements in the sets, the environments, the costumes are better, Ciri's eyes look more realistic, even Triss Merigold looks a little better, and so on. Other than that, however, things are not looking so good. I know that many people, myself included, thought that this season will be a significant improvement over the previous one, mostly based on the trailers, but sadly, I personally don't think it's any better. In fact, in some ways, it might even be worse. There are many scenes and conversations, especially around the middle episodes, which felt either boring or poorly written, or in some cases, both. Certain pieces of dialogue were so bad, I couldn't believe it. Profanity was used way too excessively, especially in Yennefer's lines, and it was just cringeworthy at times. Here's a brief example. At one point, Yennefer is telling Geralt about Ryan's, and she basically says the following. Look, I found Dandelion in Oxenford, and this firefucker was looking for him. And soon afterwards, they actually meet Ryan's, and Yennefer says, Nice scars, shithead. And then Geralt looks at her and asks, Is this the firefucker? And she keeps calling him a firefucker a few more times. She also keeps swearing and saying things like, Shit guard. And I'm like, who wrote this? Who thought this sounds cool? Why not instead draw inspiration from the Dear Friend letters? Those are in the exact same book which Season 2 is trying to adapt, and they're like the pinnacle of Yennefer's expression. And then there is the more general bad stuff, like turning certain characters into lessons or turning others into baby killers. But we'll get to that eventually. Finally, the second season is much more loosely based on the books. If you've seen any of my trailer reactions and speculations, you'll know that I often said how they're most likely going to make a lot more changes here, because the source material is much less action-packed compared to the books on which season 1 was based. And it seems I was spot on with that prediction. In fact, I likely underestimated them. The first season was, despite many things, relatively close to the original story. But here they've strayed a lot. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, but they should probably remove the Now on Netflix badge from the Blood of Elves book. But anyway, enough about that, let's focus on episode 1. <laughs> That's not a bad trick. As usual, I have to warn you that there will be all kinds of spoilers in this video, so be careful. We open up with a scene in the snow which shows a mysterious creature killing a small group of people who are only seeking shelter. There's plenty of blood and screaming, but something important is missing here, which turns this scene into little more than pointless slaughter. But we'll get to that later. Next up, we see the aftermath of the Battle of Sodden. Yennefer is missing and Tissaia is desperate to find her. She's going through the memories of dead soldiers, but with no success. She then starts crying and screaming for Yennefer. And then Geralt starts screaming. Yennefer! He shows up with Ciri, and I think he's too quick to assume that Yennefer is dead, only because they haven't found her yet. Is she alive? We won because of her. She bought us time until the armies arrived and he just accepts it and moves on. He makes a peculiar face as well. I think I know what he was going for here. So, in the books, Geralt arrives later, not immediately after the battle, and there is already a memorial built with the names of the Fallen. And there we have an incredibly memorable and emotional moment of him going through each name, hoping that Yennefer will not be one of them. And with every passing moment he is filled with even more doubt and despair, because he knows that death is following in his footsteps. It's wonderful stuff that is established in the story which they removed from Season 1, you know, the one I complain about in every video, 
but I'll try not to now. Siri still doesn't know who Yennefer is. Can you please tell me who she is? She still can't pronounce Skellige properly. What about Skellig? Roach is agitated and Geralt calms him with the axe. Easy. <laughs> Siri herself can use some of that because she is having one of her signature bad dreams, and then she asks, So, I'm your destiny? It is here that we realize once again how badly they messed up Geralt and Siri's relationship in season 1. They removed every moment from the books which gives meaning to what Geralt is about to answer. You're much more than that, Cirilla. And now it's simply empty words. Anyway, we cut back to Aretuza where they're trying to save Triss, Tissaia is still mourning Yennefer, Fringilla has abandoned all the rules of chaos. She has abandoned all rules of chaos. Whatever that means, and they're ready to start torturing Kair for information. You will give us everything we need. We then cut to Yennefer who is captured by Fringilla, and we get a small taste of what Yennefer's dialogue will sound like throughout the rest of the season. Back to Geralt and Ciri, they are taking a detour to Nivellan's house, and this is where the main plot of the episode begins. It is based on the Grain of Truth story from the first Witcher book, which is most likely my absolute favorite story of the books in general. I love it. So they arrive at the house, Nivellan charges in, and they actually know each other. This time around, they seem to be old friends. This is the first major departure from the original story, but back there, Ciri was not present at all, so I suppose I understand there is still someone new who doesn't know Nivellen. So they get inside, Ciri gets a flying bath, bath! <laughs> and in this version of the story, Verena is already inside the house, hiding in the attic. Now later on we find out that she was hidden there by Nivellen to avoid Geralt. You know, him being a witcher and her being a Bruxa. And I can't help but wonder, is this really the best idea, considering Geralt's superhuman senses? Nivellen, do you have a cat? I think the poor thing might be stuck in the ceiling. I do, in fact. She's fine. Now let's talk about Nivellen. I like the way he looks. I realize they did not go for the more bear-like appearance from the books, choosing instead to make him resemble a wild boar but he's definitely an improvement over some of the other monster characters we've seen in Season 1, and the actor is good as well. We shall see later on in the season how there are many scenes with rather bland acting, but here it's quite the contrary. He's very much into it, the scenes with him are enjoyable, and simply pleasant to watch. They do have more of a comedic twist than the source material. Gross medicine, sweet wine, and lots of it! I just, I just. But given the presence of Ciri, I think it's fine. She also gives him an excuse to tell his life's story, which is probably the best part of the original. Now, the tale of how Geralt helped him with the monster is not in the books, but it is good. This one pulls me up by the scruff of my neck and slays the wyvern snapping at my nethers. And I approve of it because it helps Ciri learn something more about Geralt's character. God paid either way. Nonsense. He's a big softy. Which is important after all the things they removed from season 1. However, there are some questionable changes. Contrary to the books, for example, Nivellen comes across as more dishonest. He chooses to, until the very end, hide the truth about why he was really cursed to be a monster forever. After the damage was done, this priestess cursed me to live like this which is because he agreed to lose his virginity by raping a priestess. This was while raiding her temple in his youth. You might think he hides it because Ciri is there, but he won't admit it to Geralt privately either. Go to sleep, you soul mole Karja. See you in the morning. Another vital part they removed is the whole ordeal with the locals who would often bring their daughters in exchange for a reward. It all started with a single merchant who wanted to take one of Nivellen's unique blue roses and give it to his daughter. Nivellen caught him and in his anger threatened that he will only let him go in exchange for the girl. 
You see, he had heard tales about a kiss, being able to break a curse, and he also remembered that the priestess mentioned true love when she cursed him. But then, when the shaken merchant replied that his daughter is only a little girl at the age of eight or so, Nivellen felt really bad about it, about what he had said and done, and he let the merchant go free. In fact, he let him go with a hefty sack of coin as an apology. And then, when they heard the rumors, other local merchants would start voluntarily bringing their daughters to Nivellen to live with him for a while in exchange for a large sum of money. So they were basically selling out their daughters. Meanwhile, Nivellen would accept, but he will always treat the women kindly and with respect. He would never force them into anything. In fact, despite committing heinous crimes, Nivellen was still rather young and stupid and quite shy and even antisocial. But eventually he would slowly improve. Then he would always return the women to their fathers along with the hefty rewards they expected. He was quite rich, by the way, legacy from his father, but despite of it all, his curse would never break. None of these women would truly love him for what he is. So his story is quite the interesting take on human nature, on fear and greed and whatnot. It's also inspired by Beauty and the Beast, naturally, but we don't really get that in season two. I suppose it's the price we have to pay for having to include Ciri and having to talk about her and Geralt and how witchers are made. Anyway, we are interrupted by Tissaia explaining in great detail how horrifically she's about to torture Kair because he might be hiding some information about her little piglet. Then there's another scene with Fringilla and Yennefer measuring their chicken bones. At least conjure me up some decent food before we get to shit god. And we're back to Nivellen, showing the story of Lara Doran to Ciri. It's a nice little bit of foreshadowing for what we're going to learn about Ciri soon. They also found a clever way to mention Emir. Malsak told me of a hedgehog man who was cured by true love. To bring us up to speed with Ciri's past briefly. I wish I could go back in time and save him. Save everyone. Nivellen even makes a pun of being a boar. I'm being a boar. There is once again a name drop of the Wild Hunt in the very first episode I saw them myself, just last week. The Wraiths of Morhog. My grandfather saw them just before Sintra fell. My grandfather was a drunk. Okay, so Geralt says that Aest was a drunk and therefore can't be trusted to have seen the Wild Hunt. I saw the Wraiths of Morhog over the channel this morning. Yes, you mentioned him. Eh? But was he truly a drunk? I can't recall him being particularly drunk in season 1. I know his wife was drunk. Also, Geralt met him before Ciri was even born, and he made that claim about seeing the Wild Hunt some 12 years later. But anyway, I still think this is the best of all the episodes. It certainly is my favorite. And speaking of things I like, Verena shows up, and she's great. Her eyes might look a little too plastic, but other than that, I like her. Her entrance is like something out of a horror movie, but why not? She's an incredibly dangerous, mind-altering vampire after all. The two young women exchange some philosophical theories about what is and isn't a monster. Monsters do bad things to people. Humans do bad things to everybody. Verena tactfully puts Siri to sleep, and things are about to get real not too long afterwards. Geralt figures out that there's a Bruxer in the house. There's a Bruxer in the house. Ciri is sent on the run, and Geralt stumbles upon Verena drinking Nivellen's blood. A fight erupts, Verena turns out to be kind of a one-trick pony. Occasionally, Geralt makes use of the heliotrope sign. She goes into bad form, but unlike the books, where she basically kicks Geralt's butt, he is able to easily overpower her here, and she has to resort to threatening Ciri in order to make him leave. I'll rip her throat out and let her keep us alone. Then Nivellen simply stabs her in the back, and it's over. She loves him, the curse is lifted, he finally admits to raping the priestess, and Geralt and Ciri immediately turn away, leaving him to his suffering. And I think I finally understand why some of the changes were made. 
it seems that they didn't like the fact that Book Geralt did not immediately abandon Nivellen after learning about the rape, but the only way for Netflix Geralt to be friendly was if he had no idea about it. I don't know, I could be wrong. And I'd like to take another moment here to talk about Verena. I'm not a big fan of the changes to her character. She is made to look too innocent, she appears kind and unwilling to use violence unless it's her last resort. He's wrong. I don't want to hurt you. She seems willing to let both Geralt and Ciri live in peace, and she only drinks Nivellen's blood of his own volition. And to ease her cravings, I let her feed on me. But she couldn't control herself. You might in fact be wondering, why then would she kill these people at the start of the episode? They were clearly brutalized and not simply drained for their blood. Well, I'm surprised that the show left this part in, but removed the explanation. You see, Verena was a more complex character in the original story. She truly was capable of human-like emotions, such as love and pride and jealousy. But she was also a monster, and she subjected Nivellen to dreams and songs that would slowly indoctrinate him, to use a Mass Effect term, you know, that would slowly enthrall him and give her even more power and control over him. Yet, in her own monstrous ways, she was the only woman who truly loved him, exactly the way he is, more so than all the other human women who were brought to him. And despite what she is, he loved her as well. This was at least part of the reason why he was hesitant, he wasn't sure if he wanted the curse to be lifted to begin with. Because he loved her and he knew that she will no longer want to be with him if he turned human. She also loved the house and the courtyard with the dolphin statue and the garden where the rare blue roses of Nazaire bloomed. And she hated outsiders. She wanted the whole territory for herself and she took advantage of Nivellen's ability to shoo people away. You could now guess how she reacted to the merchant who brought his young daughter to Nivellen, to the fact that in the original story she took one of the blue roses from the garden and pinned it on herself. No, the roses belonged to Verena. Nivellen belonged to Verena. She was the lady of the manor and she would not have any of that. That is why she murdered those people the way she did. Originally Geralt left without encountering her at all, but then, thanks to Roach, he found clues about Verena's true nature, and he immediately returned to Nivellen, because the two of them had grown close during their brief encounter. And once he found out what was about to happen to him, what Verena was about to turn him into, he couldn't let it stand, so he returned. By that point, Verena had returned to the house as well, and when she saw the Witcher, when she realized that her plans for Nivellen and her true nature have been exposed, she immediately attacked him, and she was about to kill him. Geralt only survived because Nivellen himself intervened to save his life by stabbing his beloved, the beloved who would then, in an act of true love, attempt to have him killed because she wouldn't stand the notion of him potentially belonging to another. And Netflix... They kind of missed the mark. Got a little emotional there, but um, yeah, it's such a good story. I urge you to read it or to listen to the audiobook. Not to mention the following description of how Geralt cuts off her head, which is absolutely epic. And here, the fight is more one-sided. Nivellen is portrayed as being more dishonest and generally in a less sympathetic light. Verena, contrary to that, is presented in a much better one, She's far more innocent and less malevolent. And I almost forgot to mention that in the original story, Nivellen is face to face with Verena when he kills her. It is a similar scene, he stabs her with a large pole, but he doesn't do it behind her back. And there is none of that rotating head and goofy expressions. <gasps> well, I suppose the rotating head is not that bad, but I think the impact of doing it face to face is stronger. But anyway, there's a decent scene between Geralt and Ciri, which follows... Fear is an illness. If you catch it and you leave it untreated, it can consume you. Fear will be a major factor in Ciri's upcoming story, so it's nice that they tie it in here. 
And finally, we wrap up the episode with this scene. Archers! Release me. You know I'm more powerful. I can save us. Meanwhile, Fringilla is the one who originally blinded and disabled Yennefer during the Battle of Sodden. Of course, that doesn't necessarily mean that Fringilla is the stronger one, but she's definitely supposed to be a match for her, at least. Anyway, everyone dies and the episode ends, so tell me what you think of all this, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and if you haven't already, check the original Grain of Truth story. And you can also check the playlist with my reviews of Season 1. Alright, thank you very much for watching, special thanks to my supporters and YouTube members, and until the next video, which, unless I spontaneously turn into a lesson, uh, I will be releasing in several days. Okay, stay tuned and be good.